Minister Jari. Yes, hi. And oh. and also the 150th anniversary of the Confederation. Coming up very Coming soon. Up. Nice. I'm very happy to be here. Thanks, Chad. Gladly. Uh, first and foremost, what music are you listening to these days? Um, I like uh, I like a lot indie music. Mm-hmm. Um, I like music, uh, actually classical music also. Okay. Uh, my partner is really, really into uh, classical music uh, because he, uh, he, in French I would say, il a fait la lutterie. So he, uh, a violent ma- violin maker. Okay. He studied violin making. Uh, so, uh, so you're and, a fan of classical music? And of indie music. I live in my land in Montreal, mm-hmm. so uh, the home of uh, great bands such as Arcade Fire. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm, I'm very fond of it. What other kind of art are you drawn to and, and why? Um, I'm really a big art collector. Um, I've sat on the board of the Contemporary Art Museum in Montreal, so I, I love buying some pieces of art, contemporary art. I was at the Art Bank uh, two days ago in Ottawa because I wanted to make sure that uh, in the entire office uh, would reflect uh, really the visual arts that is happening right now in, what, Montreal, in, in, in Canada. What pieces do you look for? What moves you in a piece of art? Um, I like it when I can understand or I can feel um, what v- visual artists are uh, what's their uh, understanding of society? Um, what are they uh, reading through uh, the social phenomenon? And I really like that. And I'm not an artist myself, but I'm a, a very big fan, and I get and, and and I like decoding what they feel. You look for the social commentary. Social commentary, and also the psyche, the social psyche of it. Mm. Um, so I love theater and, and dance. Um, I come from a city where uh, arts is very important. And, um, and, and I've been, throughout my career, I was uh, very much involved in arts uh, philanthropy. And, and I understand that's kind of how you transitioned into politics. We're going to get to that uh, yeah. in a minute. You've done so much in your professional life so far. Lawyer, journalist. <laughs> uh, among other things. Where, at, CB, at Radio Canada. At Radio CBC. Canada, That exactly. wasn't long, though. <laughs> uh, well, it wasn't long, but y- y- your career has, has definitely gone in, in a range of directions. When did your ambition for politics begin? I always thought I would uh, go into politics uh, since I'm a little, I, I was a little girl. Um, I didn't know when. Um, I, uh, and, and in my uh, mid-20s, uh, along with friends, uh, we created a political think tank that was aimed at um, enticing young people to get involved and uh, to have their voice heard uh, regarding different political issues. It was a nonpartisan uh, political think tank. It was very much um, inspired by what uh, uh, Trudeau and and other uh, great uh, political figures had done in the 50s. Um, And I think that was my political debut to a certain extent. What made you feel like that was the time if you've had political ambitions for your whole life? What sparked something for you at that Hmm. time? Well, you never really... It's it's all about intuition and uh, risk-taking. My f- after getting involved uh, much more in a nonpartisan way, uh, Justin Trudeau's brother, Sasha Trudeau, uh, which I got, I had had the chance to get involved with at the Museum of Contemporary Arts, uh, approached me uh, to get involved in in Mr. Trudeau's his brother Justin Trudeau's leadership campaign, and that was my first political engagement. Later on, um, I uh, decided to start a, a municipal party and mm-hmm. ran to become and run to become mayor of Montreal. Um, and and so these were different uh, steps that I took, but there was no overall plan mm-hmm. I I think at at, at core uh, I think I'm a, a very entrepreneurial person I love ha- having ideas developing them and, and then implementing them um, so I think that's how I um, I undertook my political yeah. career well let's let's talk about these plans and mm-hmm. implementing them you said you plan to increase arts funding yes. for the Canada Council for telefilm the National Film Board why is that important to you well when you think about it, um, our our government was elected on a very specific economic agenda that was very different from other parties, which was based on growth. And how do you create growth in our society is necessarily through innovation. 
And how do you um, really at the and in order to innovation to happen, you need to have the right ecosystem. And at the core of that ecosystem is arts and culture. And I had the chance to meet a lot of cultural institutions from here uh, in Toronto or from elsewhere in Canada. And I like to think that they're the fauna and flora of that ecosystem. What gives you that faith that art is important to innovation? That is, why do you think it's such a critical part of that ecosystem? Uh, well, because I think it, it, it entices uh, creativity and, and thinking differently and exploring new routes, new frontiers, um, and uh, seeing a world in a different way. And therefore, it, it, it brings new ideas, uh, and, and, and you can do maybe some, some, some how can I say, some... Uh, Collaboration. Collaborations, mm -hmm. or even um, uh, find new ideas by, by uh, making different disciplines, uh, uh, and joining them together. So... Um, that's why I think ultimately governments that will understand the importance of arts and culture will uh, ultimately um, support innovation and create growth. Why, why do you want to support art through these strong legacy institutions, especially in a time of, of great change, of great innovations? Why do you want to channel the support through these legacy cultural institutions? Well, when you think of the Canada Council, it's really the institutions that after, uh, well, that will receive more funding and then that gives back to different artists, to different institutions. So it's the best way to really invest in our different communities. And that's been the, 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 the funding model of Canada for, for decades. But do you um, think it's still relevant, especially for a newer generation? You're only 36, mm -hmm. I'm 33. Mm -hmm. Of course there are. Um, I think uh, I'm a strong believer that um, politics is a vector of change. Government uh, ought to be ad adapted and adapted to our, our, our society. And, and not only that, that it ought to be more flexible. Um, change can happen, of course, through arts and culture, through science, through, through the private sector. But... Uh, Governments are, are a key factor, and, uh, and these and these institutions, though, like, are do you feel like they're still relevant to of course our they are. generation? Yeah. There are they have like lots of uh, institutions. Uh, some of them uh, aged maybe a bit faster than others, uh, but they are uh, extremely relevant, and they've been uh, quite battered over over the past uh, years uh, because of uh, uh, underfunding and and. Uh, because of, I think, in, in general, the, the lack of interest towards the arts and culture field. Um, although they've done great things, they've adapted uh, to, the, uh, to, to the digital era. If I look at uh, what the NFB has done, the National Film Board, uh, or even Telefilm Canada, I'm quite impressed with what they've done. To adapt to, to adapt. Yeah. And when you look at it, and I was talking, it goes to what I was saying in terms of uh, uh, the importance of arts and culture. Canada is, you know, uh, when you look at the creative sector, and when I talk about creative sector, it's the arts, culture, uh, it includes design, advertising. It's up to $47.7 billion per year. That's twice more than forestry, agriculture, and fisheries altogether. Mm -hmm. That's 600,000 people that are employed in that sector. Um, Canada is the third biggest uh, video games producer. It's the third biggest music exporter. So you include that in... Uh, yes, you know. I include that. But it, it talks to the importance of that field. It talks about also the fact that it's time for Canada to realize, of course, the contribution of arts and culture, but the incredible potential. And, and not only that, that uh, we ought to think of culture as... Um, an asset to Canada that ought to be promoted uh, even internationally and, 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 and when we think of our exportations mm -hmm. uh, strategy, that's certainly something uh, we should bear in mind. Okay, let's, let's talk about museums. You've been involved with museums. Mm -hmm. uh, what exhibits have you seen lately that make you think this is the sort of thing we need to be promoting? These are the sorts of 
conversations we need to be having in our museums? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I was recently at the uh, Canterbury Art Museum in Montreal where I saw Patrick Bernatchez. That was really interesting. And uh, it was about uh, the transition uh, from um, the garment district of Montreal to a much more the high-tech or, or uh, uh, startup district in my land. And the fact that uh, from a garment district, the, f the transition was that artists uh, started really um, uh, occupying the different spaces. Mm -hmm. And then there's a gent gentrification happening and artists are leaving. So really, how do you make sure to protect uh, that ecosystem uh, and 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 it talked about the role ultimately how I saw it the role that government can play in making sure that uh, there's the right uh, public spaces again, or private to, spaces yeah. for 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 artists again back to the ecosystem yes uh, again uh, in terms of museums yes I'll be honest with you I don't always feel like I belong. Mm -hmm. in those spaces. I don't always see... Why is that? Do you want to talk about it, Chad? I want to talk about it with you. I don't always see um, myself reflected in, this, in the stories, in the audiences. What do you hope to do to make those spaces more welcoming, those mm -hmm. public spaces? Those, yeah. um, I think that one of the key vectors should be uh, diversity and inclusion. Uh, that's one thing. Uh, I think also there must be a better democratization of uh, music's, museums' uh, content in order not that it's only an elite uh, approach, but really that it, it's in line with how people uh, talk, think, uh, behave. Um, so some institutions are better adapted than others. Uh, also, it's important to understand the digital shift. And, and you'll hear me a lot talking about the importance of digital, but really to um, understand not only uh, the fact that uh, exhibitions ought to be presented on the web and, and content should be, uh, sh should be accessible, but also understand how people behave on the web and what are the expectations uh, they have mm -hmm. when coming to museum based on how they usually behave on the web, which is access to information, lots of personalization, uh, and, and being able to interact a lot with the content. Uh, your portfolio includes the CBC and yes. Radio Canada, Mm -hmm. AKA this uh, corporation where mm -hmm. we are right now. What's your take on programming right now at the CBC? Um, well, I think there's lots of great, uh, great um, things done. Uh, being the Canadian Heritage Minister, I'm not in charge of the content. I'm not in charge of the operations. There's somebody in charge. Um, but uh, I, I really believe uh, that uh, a public broadcaster is relevant and is important now. And uh, why is that? Is uh, But at the same time, it needs to be adapted to our times. And why is that? Is that when you look at, at it in the 30s, well, the CBC and later Radio Canada was created because there was a new technology, which was radio, mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, created. And it was important to give information uh, to Canadians. And uh, that's why a public broadcaster was born. Later on, uh, the CBC had ad adapted very well in the 50s and then 60s to the arrival of television. Uh, but now we're in 2015, as our prime minister say. Digital uh, age. It's the digital age. So uh, how do we uh, have a public broadcast or even a public content mm -hmm. um, uh, producer and distributor in, 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 in the digital era? But, but I do want to ask you in terms of programming, the reason why I asked you about mm -hmm. programming is um, just what... Uh, what do you want to see in terms of conversations, in terms of content mm -hmm. um, that you think is relevant to Canadians? That's something I think about a lot in my job, obviously. When you turn on the Radio Canada or the CBC, what do you feel is missing in terms of those conversations? Mm. Is it a question personally? Or personally, as a yeah, just, just personally. <laughs> just personally. What, what would you like to see reflected? Um, I think that there's great... Uh, great content being developed. Uh, I think also that uh, different voices are not necessarily always heard 
and that could be uh, better heard if there was more funding and that's why there's going to be more funding to Radio Canada CBC. Um, I like also the fact that uh, there can be, just like here, different formats for different types of, uh, of um, uh, subjects. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and I like I, I personally like and and maybe uh, the people at the department will be surprised, but I like the uh, Vice uh, magazine approach, where it's uh, it's really talking about different subjects in a different manner. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, and I uh, so and I I would like to see uh, the uh, CBC being uh, somehow a risk taker. Uh, in in terms of content, and and that's how I think ultimately it will uh, make sure to attract new audiences and 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 uh, again be relevant. You brought up uh, an appreciation for art that reflects uh, social change or, or or ideas about society. Yes. Uh, the artists, the best artists, in my opinion, are social critics, sometimes political critics. Mm -hmm, for sure. How, how do you feel about potentially funding your your critics? Well, I have no problem with that. Um, I like uh, being surrounded with people that don't necessarily uh, think like I do, and I like to be. Uh, uh, I like to be with strong people, actually, even stronger than myself, uh, because it uh, it fuels me. Um, and I think it's very important in a democracy to have these uh, voices heard. And that's how uh, you have, ultimately, this may sound a bit off, but uh, social cohesion. Mm -hmm. Because everybody has a right to express themselves, of course. Uh, if it's not, it doesn't go, fall into hatred speech. But, uh, um, and, and, uh, and this is how we can have a very strong uh, democracy in society. Mm. Last week, along with the Canada Council, you announced a program that would give Syrian refugees free access to museums yes. and other cultural institutions. What's the image of Canada you want refugees to see uh, very quickly in those uh, galleries and spaces? A very diverse and inclusive society, a society where they will feel home and that it won't, uh, we won't wait uh, many generations for them to count or to integrate but that the integration of the Syrian refugees will happen in one generation. Um, so we've talked a lot about the digital age. Yes. Let's talk about Canadian content in mm -hmm. the age of uh, the internet. Do you think streaming services, streaming TV services, should be required to fund or carry Canadian programming? Hmm. Uh, well, I certainly think that uh, there's a new model to be created in order to um, really seize the opportunity of the digital. And that's why we're working hard to um, have some eventually public consultation about the uh, consequences and the opportunity in relation with the digital shift. Um, so stream, streaming is part of that. Streaming is certainly something that is increasing and that people are using. And, uh, well, as a government, we need to understand this and we need to seize the opportunity. Um, could and you, that's could why you see that happening? I mean, traditional broadcasters are required to fund or carry mm -hmm. Canadian programming. So could you see that happening, that uh, streaming TV services, or do you think they should well, be required? Well, I, I think that uh, before taking any stance on it, we need to have more information about what's uh, what's the take of different stakeholders, and uh, you know we shouldn't be uh, uh, blind. There are uh, some important techno technological changes that have an uh, that that uh, um, the, and there's necessarily behavior changes and necessarily uh, that affects our creators. Who are and the stakeholders that you want to consult? Well, all of them may be content creators, content distributors, uh, the general public. And, uh, and it's important. I see myself as, you know, I came to politics to, um, to a certain extent, uh, um, this may, may sound strong, but to hack the system. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, um, and I'm certainly I'm very much aware that uh, especially uh, some young people are uh, – quite cynical or skeptical of the possibility of government to adapt, and especially in light of these technological changes. Um, so 
that's why we need to make sure to hear these voices, hear the voices of people of all age, from millennials to mm -hmm. baby boomers, uh, and understand their uh, their content uh, uh, behaviors, uh, content. Uh, uh, how can I say uh, the, the the what they listen to, what how they listen to it, and uh, what are their expectations what in to, order to adapt. But um, what is the fix if it's not? requiring these streaming services. I mean, as I said, you're, you're 36, I'm 33. Our mm -hmm. friends are watching Netflix. Mm -hmm. You know, What's the fix if it's not uh, requiring these services to, to, to support Canadian programming? Well, uh, of course, uh, you know, what is content creation in our age? Are they only artists that do that for a living? Or is it the general population? Uh, how do we make sure that, our, uh, for example, uh, Canada Council or the Media Fund or every types of public support, how do they, are they well adapted to our time? This is the big question. And that's why I was saying to you offline uh, before, um, uh, Never before Heritage has been so strategic. Mm -hmm. It is strategic right now because of these changes. Huge changes. Exactly. Do you have a, a timeline for looking into how streaming services, TV services um, should Everything. be Everything. It goes from books to... to uh, but but to, that in particular, do you have a timeline the, for um, that question of streaming services and their, we, their funding we, and support? We would like to uh, work on public consultations over the next months because it's important and because I'm here... <laughs> In politics, to to um, to make sure to adapt to make the the the, the government uh, uh, model uh, better flexible. So and so and and you're talking about music, but it goes also to how uh, the CBC and Radio Canada is relevant. It's all linked because it's all linked to how uh, we consume information. So that's a and content in general. So that's a high priority consultation. It is in the a next very high priority, few months, along yeah. with the 150th anniversary of the Confederation. Minister Jody, thank you so much. It was a pleasure, Chad. I hope I will have the chance to chat again. I hope you'll come back. Of course. It's... What band would you like to see if you were back here in hmm. Studio Q? I like the Stills. The Stills. Yeah. Okay. Next. I, hey. I, yeah. I'm doing them free advertising right now. <laughs> <laughs> thank you again, Minister. Thank you.